everyone. Welcome to class 103. Um, we're going to use some VIR tables today. Um, this is a big class for this unit, so just make sure you're comfortable with everything here and you're able to do it all from scratch, but I'll walk you through it all. So first things first, you need to be very familiar with these um, circuit equations. These are on your reference table, no need to ever memorize them, but they are important to know. So first off, this first one tells us that in a series circuit, the current is the same throughout. So when you have a series circuit, the current in one place is the current everywhere. The next equation tells us that the voltages of each resistor, the voltage used by each resistor is equal to the voltage of the battery, the total voltage of the circuit. And last, the equivalent resistance or the total resistance, whatever you want to call it, of the circuit is just the sum of all the resistors. Now, a parallel circuit is kind of opposite that. In a parallel circuit, the currents through each one of the branches add up to the total current through the circuit or through the battery. The voltage of the battery is equal to the voltage in each branch. And this is a little tricky, this equation, the equivalent resistance isn't simply adding them together, it's this one over our equivalent equation, okay? So we'll practice that a little bit today. All right, so I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly, but uh, here we go. So we have a series circuit here, because it's one loop, all right? And it says, what is the equivalent resistance for the circuit to the right? So to do that, our equivalent is simply the addition of the two, four ohms plus five ohms, it's as easy as that, nine ohms. So we're done there, okay. So this next part's a little bit more challenging. It says, what is the current through each resistor? Well, one thing that's important to note here is that the current is the same everywhere. Okay, so right now I really can't get the current through each resistor, but I can get the current through the battery. So let's get the current through the battery. So the current through the battery is like the total current of the circuit, if you will. It's equal to the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistance, which we have. And we have both of those actually. The voltage of the battery is nine volts. The equivalent resistance is nine ohms. We get one amp. And that is the current everywhere, okay? It is one amp throughout the entire circuit. All right, so I'm gonna add these values here. So this is one amp, this is one amp, this is one amp. All right, so what's the voltage drop or potential difference across each resistor? So for that, the voltage across the resistor so let's say re resistor four is equal to the current across resistor four times its resistance. And the voltage across resistor five is equal to the current across or through resistor five times the resistance of resistor five. All right, so resistor four has a current of one amp and a resistance of four ohms. So we get the voltage of four volts. And for five, we get a current of one and a resistance of five for a voltage of five volts, okay? Do those add up to nine volts? Yes, which is what we expect in a series circuit. Notice how all the voltages add up in a series circuit according to our equations. So this is four volts, this is five volts. So do these things agree with our series equations? Yes, the voltages add up to the voltage of the battery. The currents are all the same. The resistors simply add up to get the equivalent resistance. Everything checks out. Now, that's kind of annoying to do personally. I always use these VIR tables to do this stuff because I think it's just a great way to organize your data and work through it. So let's get to it. So let's draw a resistor really quickly. Or actually not a resistor, a circuit. So we have three resistors in, in series. All right, this is 12 volts. This is gonna be 15 ohms. This is gonna be 20 ohms. This is gonna be 25 ohms, okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to draw my current. I just like doing that um, out of the big end into the smaller end. Just a good habit to get into. All right, so let's add all of our values onto this chart. So notice how each column represents voltage, current, or resistance, and each row represents the um, resistor, which resistor we're talking about. So one thing that's important to note is that your values that go in the equivalent row, this is basically your battery, okay? All right, so voltage for the battery is going to be 12 volts. All right, and the resistors are each 15, 20, and 25. Okay, my units are volts, amps, and ohms. All right, so how do I wanna go about doing this first? Well, I know in a series circuit that all my voltages add together. So I add those all up. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm gonna say that this is 60 ohms. So there's my equivalent resistance, done there. Okay, so what can I do next? Well, I gotta look for a row or a column that maybe only needs like one thing. Um, look at the bottom row. Bottom row, I only need one thing right here. Okay, well, let's see, I have voltage and I have resistance, I need current. Um, I can use the equation R equals V over I. If I plug in my resistance of 60 
and my voltage of 12 and solve for I, I can get that I is equal to, I think, 0 0.2 amps. All right. And V equals I times R, so that works out too. Now, this is a series circuit, so we know in a series circuit, all of the currents are the same. Awesome. So guess what? Now I know all of my currents. So that was the second thing I did, and now I'm just going to fill those all in. Okay, I know that these are all 0.2 because I know the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. Now, last little bit, I got to find my voltages. So I just use the equation R equals V over I. Um, in this case, my R value is going to be 15. My V value is going to be unknown. My I value is 0.2. Um, and this is going to be voltage equals 3 volts. And I'm going to go down now. So this is 3 volts. This is going to be 4 volts. I don't actually don't need to put the units in because I have them at the top. This last one here is going to be 5 volts. Good way to check my work. Do my voltages add up? Yeah, they do. 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals 12. That's what our voltage equation tells us should happen in a series circuit. So there we go. That's it. As easy as that. A lot of ways to check your work. Check, does R equal V over I in each row? Yes. Do my currents add up? Or excuse me, do my uh, resistances add up? Yes. Are my currents the same? Yes. Do my voltages add up? Yes. Perfect. A lot of ways to check this. All right, so we have another series circuit. Just one thing to note is that these voltmeters do not affect the circuit at all. They're just simply measuring voltage. They don't affect the circuit at all. Neither does the ammeter. It's just measuring current. So let's, let's get these values. So let's fill in our chart. So I know that the battery has a voltage of 10 volts. So I'm going to throw that right here. And I know that each resistor is 25 ohms, 25 ohms, and 25 ohms. I have them labeled from left to right. So here we go there. This is amps, and this is ohms. Okay. So what do we do first? Well, we know this is a series circuit, so let's add up all the resistors. Easy as that, you just add them up, very simple. All right, basically the same step as last time. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve right here. I'm gonna do R equals V over I. And my R value is going to be 75. My V value is going to be 10, and my I value is gonna be unknown. And I get a current of, let's see, I think that's 0 0.13 repeating, all right? And guess what? That is my value for all of these. So let's just throw that in. 0 0.13 repeating, 0 0.13 repeating, 0 0.13 repeating. All right. Next thing I have to do is I'm going to go right here. R equals V over I. My R value is 25. My V is unknown. My I value is 0 0.13 repeating, of course. All right. Working through the math there, I should get 3.3 repeating. All right. So V equals 3.3 repeating volts. So this is 3.3 volts. I'll leave the units off there. This is 3.3 repeating. This is 3.3 repeating. And those all add up to 10. So let's check my work. Um, are my currents all the same? Yes. Do my resistors add up to the equivalent resistance? Yes. Do my voltages add up to the total voltage? Yes. If I go across, does uh, resistance equal voltage divided by current? Yes, I believe so. So we're all set. Now, just the concept question that's really important to know here. If this circuit represents a string of lights, what would happen if one burned out? Well, if one light were to burn out, the circuit would effectively break. There would be like a hole in this circuit, okay? So the current can't create a closed loop. Nothing's going to light up. So really important here. If one light goes out, they all go out. This was uh, traditionally something that with like holiday or Christmas lights would be an issue. Um, so what's what, what's the disadvantage of uh, lights wired in series? Well, that's it. If one light goes out, they all go out. Now let's put parallel circuits real quick. All right. So parallel circuits are a little bit different. We know that our our equivalent formula is a bit different. It's actually this: one over our equivalent equals one over R one, which in this case is going to be ten ohms. I'm going to leave the units out for now. Plus one over fifteen ohms. Plus one over thirty ohms. Okay. Now this can be a little bit tricky. So when you add all of these up. You end up getting 0 0.2. That is not your answer. Okay, one over our equivalent is equal to 0 0.2. So you have to raise both sides to the negative one, and you get an R equivalent value of five. Now, a lot of students, when they see this, they think they did something wrong. They say, "Wait a minute, how do I get a re equivalent resistance that is less than any of my resistors?" Well, whenever you have um, resistors set up in parallel, your equivalent resistance is always going to be less than less than any of the resistors. Always. Okay. So there you go. That's why that happened, all right? Why does that happen? Like, why why is it less than 10? I mean, think about it. Like, shouldn't those other resistors be adding resistance? No, they're actually adding additional pathways for the current to go through. So it actually makes it easier for the overall flow of current. It doesn't affect the current through, like, the 10-ohm branch, but it does overall affect the current to make it easier to flow through. So what is the total current in the circuit? So to do that, 
similar to the last one, the current through this total current through the circuit is like the current through the battery. That's equal to the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistance. Okay, so the voltage of the battery is going to be 30 volts, and the equivalent resistance is going to be 5 ohms for a total current of 6 amps. So if you were drawing the 6 amps on here, that 6 amps would go right here. All right. What is the voltage drop across each resistor? Well, we know this is a parallel circuit, so if you look at our equations, our equation tells us that the voltage is the same throughout a parallel circuit in each branch. So that's what we have here. So each voltage is going to be 30 volts Okay, for each one. So the current through resistor 1 is going to be equal to the voltage across resistor 1 divided by its resistance. Okay, That's just rearranging the equation R equals V over I, cross-multiplying, solving for I. So the voltage is going to be 30 volts. The current is going to be, excuse me, the resistance is going to be 10 ohms. We're going to get 3 amps. All of these should add up to be 6. So we'll see what we get. V2 over R2. We have 30 volts over 15 ohms. And we get 2 amps. And last one here. So if we add all of these up, we get six amps, so it checks out. But again, I like VIR tables for this, so let's do a VIR table for this just to organize our data. It's just so much better. All right, so let's throw in our givens to start. So let's see, our battery is 120 volts according to the question. Our resistances will just go from left to right are 50, 40, 30, and 20. This is voltage, this is amps, this is ohms. So first thing students love to do is they love to make a huge mistake here and they add up all the resistors just and they put down like whatever that comes out to be, uh, 140. That's wrong. You do not add resistors in that matter. You would have to use the equation 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 plus 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20. Okay. You can use that equation and you can get R equivalent. Um, I'm going to skip doing that for now, but you can use that as a check. What am I going to do instead? Well, I know this is a parallel circuit, so I know that all of my voltages are the same, so I'm just going to fill in that whole column. Okay, now I'm going to use R equals V over I to solve for this column. Okay, if I do that for this one, I get, let's say, 120, um, excuse me, I get 50 equals 120 over I, and I end up getting 2.4. So I equals 2.4. All right, so this is 2.4. If I go through and repeat that process, um, I think, let's see, this is going to be R equals V divided by I equals V over R. This is going to be 3. This is going to be 4. This is going to be 6. I can add them all up. Remember, because in a parallel circuit, all of our currents add up. So this is going to be 15.4. And then look at this. I actually don't have to do um, the 1 over R equivalent equation. I could just do R equals V over I again. So R equals V is going to be 120, I is going to be 15.4, and I get, let's see, 120 divided by 15.4, I get 7.8. Now that makes sense because I know my equivalent resistance in a parallel circuit is always going to be less than my smallest resistor. Now the nice thing about a, series, a parallel circuit is that if one burns out, the others are completely unaffected. They don't even get brighter because the voltage across them doesn't change in order to their resistance, so the current through them does not change. That's the advantage. All right, now for this one here, um, first thing you have to do is you have to draw this circuit. So let's draw it. We have two resistors in parallel. So here is my battery. It's 10 volts. All right, so this is 100 ohms. This is 200 ohms. Make the VIR table. Make your life easy. V, I, R. I'm going to leave the units out for now. This is uh, going to be R100. This is going to be R200. This is R equivalent. All right, so I know my givens are my voltage here, and this is 100, and this is 200. Do not add up those resistors. This is a parallel circuit. Watch out. It's one over our equivalent. But I can actually dodge that because I know this is a parallel circuit, so all my voltages are the same. And then I can simply just do R equals V over I. 
All right. So R equals V over I. Let's see, this comes out to be 10 over 100. Oops, I messed up my math there. 100 equals 10 over I. I does come out to be the same 0 0.1 there. So this is 0 0.1 amps. If we do it here, R equals V divided by I. I end up getting 0 0.05 amps, which adds up to be 0 0.15. Okay, these add up. Then I just do R equals V over I here. And I get 66.6 .6 repeating. I'll call it 66.7. That is smaller than any of our resistors because we know adding resistors in, in parallel decreases the overall resistance of the circuit. All right. So there we are done. You could use the 1 over R equivalent formula if you want. Try it out. 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200. I bet you you're going to get 66.6 .6 repeating for R equivalent if you don't forget to invert that at the end. There were a couple of questions here at the end. Um, what you should have found is that adding resistors in series will increase the overall equivalent resistance. Okay? Adding resistors in series, the equivalent resistance goes up and the total current goes down. In a parallel circuit, it's actually the opposite. In a parallel circuit, the equivalent resistance will go down as you add them in parallel, but the total current, I total, I'll say, is going to go up, okay? Where's the evidence of this? A few different places. First off, look here. If you have one of these resistors, let's say I cover up my 200 ohm resistor. The resistance of the circuit is 100. By adding that 200 ohm resistor, I brought down the equivalent resistance. Okay? I brought down the equivalent resistance. Okay? If it was only that 100 ohm resistor, the current through the circuit would be 0 0.1. But by adding that other one, I actually created, got a uh, current of... 0.15 I actually brought it up. That's actually some evidence right there. But make two circuits. Do it. Like do a circuit with two resistors. Do one with three resistors in series and in parallel. Do the math. All right, and work at work it out. If you have questions on it, let me know. This next one here says two um, 10 ohm resistors have an equivalent resistance of five ohms. How do two resistors get a smaller current or smaller equivalent resistance? Well, let's try it out. Two 10 ohm resistors. Well, if I add them in series, I'm going to get 10 ohms plus 10 ohms, and I get 20 ohms. So this cannot be it. If I add them in parallel, 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. And you'll find that R equivalent does come out to be um, 5 ohms here. Okay, so draw in parallel two resistors. Done. Next one here, two identical um, resistors are connected in series. Okay, well, to get 10 ohms. Well, think about it. In series, we know that R1 plus R2 is going to be the equivalent resistance. But we know they're identical, so we know they're equal. So this is 10 ohms. So how much is each R be equal to? R is equal to 5 ohms. But I want you to put them in parallel. So I put them in parallel. <laughs> 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5. And you should get an equivalent resistance in this case of about 2.5 ohms. All right, folks, so there was a lot there. But make sure you're able to do all these on your own. This was tough. Work through them all on your own again. Um, and try it out. Make sure you do the calculations. Don't just follow my lead. Um, and definitely work through those Unit 13 questions.